thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's, it's, a, pleasure. it's a pleasure. I don't get to talk to America very often these days. Oh, really? That's interesting. So it's, a, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Oh, I'm it's surprised. Nice to hear the accent. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we're here in LA, and your book, um, My Life in Dire Straits, opens up in Los Angeles. You're you're about to play the Roxy. Uh, can you? Yeah. Yeah. What what year was this? Was this this wasn't like just as Dire Straits was breaking? It seemed like uh, it was. Like a couple, a couple years later. Uh, well, I think it was. I think it was 1978. Right? Oh, it was 78. Okay. So we 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 and then we played. We came back and played it again. I think I, my memory is slightly vague at this point. But <laughs> um, yes, it was a. It, it, I mean, the Roxy is equivalent to our Marquee Club, what we used to have in London in, in Wardour Street, where literally everybody played everybody went on that stage at some point and um so the roxy had a certain um kudos for us which was slightly nerve-wracking actually i must say because you never know who's going to be there as it turned out quite a lot of people who we weren't expecting turned up um and uh, it turned into a, a pretty interesting evening to say the least you did yeah you did comment about the the a lot of industry because it's Los Angeles. A lot of industry people come to see you. Uh, yes, I mean, look, it's the same in London, you know. And the thing is, I think there was a, there was already a bit of a buzz about the band, and so uh, I suppose we were expecting a few people to put their heads around the door, but um, that we weren't really expecting Bob Dylan and Rod Stewart <laughs> to turn up. To be frank, right? <laughs> or, or Governor Jerry Brown at that moment. Um, with his date, with his date, uh, with his uh, date, Linda Ronstadt, right? Linda Ronstadt, of course. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was uh, yeah, that was California's. Um, that was that was that was our monarchy back then. Was Jerry yeah. Brown and Linda Ronstadt? Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, one felt very um, humbled actually by that. I think uh, you know, you you don't really get you don't you don't think you're going to attract those kind of people that early on in your in your uh, in your time in the music I, I hate to call it a career i nearly said career i don't like the word career because it's not really a career it's just it's just a thing you do and um for your you know, life I, isn't that a career if you're doing this for your entire life doesn't that make it a career uh well the thing about the careers is you kind of stop them don't you the thing about the thing about rock and roll music is you just carry on until um somebody up there says it's enough <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point i mean it is a career because it is what you do and it's a an easier way to refer to it i guess but you're right because a career usually has a retire a start and a retirement but that's that's also true and i also i, I try to avoid the word journey in the book as well because oh. it's so it's so overused now and uh but trying to find another word instead of journey it's it's quite, it's quite tricky but um Anyway, I mean, to go back to the Roxy for a moment, um, you know, you, you, if you if you if you meet these people who who have been your uh, mentors really for all the, especially Bob uh, Bob Dylan, you you, it's quite a it's it's a bit like sort of meeting uh, the Dalai Lama or something if you're a very religious person, you know, you you'd sort of you'd be slightly. Um, difficult to put words into a sentence in a sensible way as it was Bob was very um open and uh you know uh, I think he said something like um I can't remember what he said now it's something like uh, you got a you got a real good sound going there you know <laughs> a man of a man of uh, not many words but um and then of course he entertained us uh, very well in the in the hotel room for about two or three hours um which was quite extraordinary yeah, I tried to picture it, Bob Dylan inviting you back to the hotel with him. I know. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of pinching yourself like, what? okay, what's going on? But was this kind of an audition for uh, uh, for Mark and, and Pick? Because eventually they ended up uh, playing with him for, for the Slow Train Coming tour. I don't think it was an audition as such. I just think that, you know, Bob's, I think Bob is probably, as we know, a pretty spontaneous person. And I think he'd, he'd already checked out Mark's playing or and that's why he came to see the band and he did like the sound of the band he, there's no doubt about that yeah and um i i think he wanted to you know 
get Mark involved in what he was doing. He felt there was a sort of a, a bit of a soulmate there, I, I suspect. And um, and I think he, he he loved Pick's drumming, you know. I would have loved to have joined joined them, but I <laughs> I didn't get the invite. 